Where are you traveling, Mihai? Are you traveling back from Sauscon? So, sauce fusion, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I'm guessing maybe Michael is, tra is traveling there. Hey, Eva. You know if my girls are going to Sauce Fusion? No, I think only Jeff is going. Okay. Good morning. Hey, Maka. Wait a couple of minutes. It seems like a slow rolling start this morning. <laughs> Maybe everyone's traveling today. <laughs> I think Ben is out. Sorry? Uh, I think Ben is out. Ben, okay. I don't, I'm not sure where Mike is. Uh, we're not doing great for him, though. Okay. And I think Santiago, I don't know where Santiago is. <laughs> no, Santiago usually doesn't make it at this meeting, though. No? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess I can get started and then uh, we can talk a little bit and if we don't have, if we feel like the discussion warrants a uh, bigger crowd, we can always defer them uh, and then we can keep it short if we have to. Okay, cool. Uh, so the usual spiel, um, this meeting is being recorded. This is called maintenance meeting. Uh, it'll be available online to our the Guac YouTube channel. Um, this meeting abides by Linux Foundation and CNCF um, code conduct rules, as well as antitrust policies, more information on the pages. Um, let me usually bend us this, so let me, let me make a new copy of the, the meeting notes. Oh, so Mike, uh... Just that he's stuck in a different meeting. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, 
Oh, sauce fusion. Okay. Um, no new friends here. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to chat about was um, kind of what some of us discussed offline last week around like, you know, potentially refactoring the into like the ingestion bit the graph bit and then the, the CLIs bit. Um, let me just make sure there's nothing on the punch list or open that we have to address. Um, I saw Pavi tagged me in one of the PRs around the OCI stuff. I'll, I'll take a look at that. Yeah, I think I think you have a much better background on that piece. So I think I'd defer the review to you on that one. It's for the collector, OCI collector. Yeah. Um, and then I did tag you on one more that I opened up as a PR to 205, uh, which basically just adds filtering. Um, so because it has SBOM one is such a massive, you know, it, it returns dependencies, occurrences, packages, and artifacts. So having the client decide like what they want, right? It makes the query a lot more efficient. It's like, okay, I only want software. I don't care about dependencies. And then you can just filter out the other stuff. So that's that's what that that PR is there for. Um, thanks for yeah. Thanks me high for uh, fixing up the tests and kind of like what's the best way to doing this. <laughs> but cool. All right, I'll take a look at that. And, um... and I think the only other one was I think you were you, you're doing the depths.dim on ingestion, right? I think that's also worthwhile just doing. Yeah, I, I still have yes. like I did the the plumbing. I just haven't got to the the because I think we had to refactor some of it out. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think we can just remove depths.dev as a collector for now then. Yeah. Or, or I, we're gonna remove um, the like C sub. Yeah. 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 So I think we get we get the value from the hash source set. Um, and, and scorecard. And scorecard, yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, and then we'll figure out if, if, if on at query time, you know, which is probably the better way of doing it on query time, we query devs.dev and integrate yeah. into the search and we can figure that out later. But I think that's a better way of doing it. So. Yeah, otherwise I think we should be good. Oh, yeah. I'm just taking some notes so I can talking. <laughs> Uh. Okay. Cool. Um, let me go straight into kind of, I, I revamped and kind of like rewrote a bit of the, the, the slides I was preparing, um, and came up with some ideas, um, to how we can go forward. So let me share my screen. So I had a context around this. So, so um, for those that were not able to, to that, that they have not seen this, um, basically we, we kind of had a little bit of offline discussion around uh, GraphQL and kind of the feedback that we've been receiving from GraphQL is, and also like considering uh, all the user feedback that we've gotten, like just ad hoc. Uh, on how people are using Quark and, you know, like the, the feedback that we're getting, trying to engage users is like, yeah, it's difficult to get started. Also, you know, if you, if you saw, um, Ben's, um, Ben's presentation, uh, the community meeting last Thursday, you know, like how is it like the, the, how much staying power we have in terms of like the demos and making it easier to get people started is, is something that we want to do. Um. 
And just also, you know, since we're looking out for 1.0, we want to figure out, you know, what, what things do we have that are stable, what things that we can we can focus on and hold on. Um, I think big picture, we talked about a couple of things, right? One of it is like targeting solution providers um, as a, a yet another key customer, right? I think initially we're saying like, okay, kids walk, you know, this is users going to use this. We found like Red Hat and Kusari want to build solutions on top of it. And we, we had to kind of have like did those stable interfaces and GraphQL, although it was, uh, uh, seemed to have a little bit of friction there. Um, you know, Red Hat was just querying the SQL. Um, that's one aspect of it, uh, making it easy to on ramp using Guac. I think this is something I realized where uh, a lot of folks got stuck at like the ingestion point. Uh, just like just trying to get it working require a lot of setup, require running a lot of services and things like that. Uh, I think we want a way to make it easy for users to get started without necessarily having to do all that setup. You know, it may not be like the most e efficient thing or they may not be able to do everything, but at least they can get started. Um, and we also want to still, you know, uh, foster the insights policy building. You know, I, I think just getting folks to start building things around it. Um, we realized that everyone has like their own set of use cases and everyone's requirements are slightly different. Um, yeah. Um, and I think we, we talked about, um, uh, potentially kind of splitting it into two, three different things, right? So I think we have, um, the ingestion, which is something that's very solid. Um, you know, we, we take out, we take in all the different types of S bombs and all the metadata and, and we pass it into a common data format. Um, we've solved a lot of ingestion problems and a lot of data quality issues there, which I think is very valuable, even as in itself, uh, for folks to use. Um, so I think, you know, got ingestion is kind of like, how do I take these documents and make meaning out of the metadata? Uh, and then we have, you know, Quark Graph, which I think what we know as kind of like the Quark infrastructure, you know, how do I create a supply chain knowledge graph? And then how do I scale the things that I want to do just from getting meaning from Quark ingestion? And then we have the Quark Insights bit, which is, you know, what we've been talking about, like all the CLIs that we have and the rest of APIs on, you know, what are things that we want to query. Um, so... Um, as an example, right, I think one of the things, again, this is just a proposal um, and we, we should discuss this more maybe in the context of other folks on the call as well. Um, but for example, Quark ingest just 60 metadata documents, outputs to JSON or proto ontology. Uh, Quark gra graph um, inputs, the inputs to that is a user infrastructure and then they get a query interface and the insights is both, you know, from Quark Graph and the ontology, um, what insights you get out of it. Um, any, any questions so far? Okay. Um, I think this is the, the slide that I kind of put together to say, like, if we wanted to, to do something like that, what it could look like. Um, and let's say like, I know we're talking about one, V1, uh, one and how like that's also important to us. Um, and so I did a little bit of thinking and I think that we can kind of pursue these things separately where we've made the decision to say like, <laughs> we're only going to support one backend. We're going to hide the GraphQL interface from you. And even if you use like that, the, the backend that we have today, um, use the SQL interface and not use the, the GraphQL. Uh, and I think we can just like, based on that, we can still go to 1.0 while kind of, we are, we are kind of extracting and refactoring this ingestion bit and kind of like slowly developing like the parallel of the GraphQL, which is the, um, either the JSON or the proto, the proto ontology. I think once that 
that is the case. Like, let's say we even once we if we build this up, uh, we would still be able to just transparently. Um, so let me I have this picture here, right? So, um, this is what Guac is today. The collector is going to ingestion because it's a GraphQL assemblers goes into Ant, um, PostgreSQL, and then you query by REST and GraphQL. I think what uh, I'm proposing for V1 is say, we say, okay, here's a Guac Graph V1. It just has collectors, injection, GraphQL, Guac assembler, and then Postgres, and then users read from this. And then somewhere down the road, if we say like, okay, we've done the injection so that the, the proto ontology is done, uh, we can have the same thing where the collector ingests into the, the JSON or proto ontology and that's just a conversion to GraphQL. So like the for the user, this is still a one one over interface. And then later on, um, through the development of we can just convert the, the, the JSON proto ontology to the a database directly. Um, I think the question is like, why do we even want to do this? And, um, you know, I think as we've been exploring this a little bit, I think there is good improvements that we can add to the ontology to make it a, a little bit easier to query. Um, and those are kind of those additions or those changes that we want to do that on GraphQL, we can start doing that on this like version two of the ontology that we're developing. Um, and for for those that and, and then for the the Quark ingest um, part, you know, it's just like taking documents and putting it into a gesture and then spitting oh. out JSON. Yeah, sorry. Can we go back? Can we go back to seven for a second, actually? So, how do we query Quark Graph at at version one and just SQL? I think. So we remove the whole client side stuff completely. So that will yeah. So the, so I think that will be part of insights, which I think we we want to. I think we. It's not something that we have. Because I think there are a few things if we go back to kind of like the um uh the the punch list, right? I think there's quite a few things within the insights part of the punch list. It's like find customers, figure out their use cases, and then build the rest mm -hmm. API to support them, right? I mm -hmm, mm -hmm. don't think we are like if we want to do one point oh by like let's say end of this year, <laughs> I mm -hmm. don't think we're gonna we're gonna get there with that, right? And then I think uh, I think the subtle suggestion here is to say like, oh, REST APIs and and um, CRIs can be a bit fluid. So how does a CI like, you know, let's say, or, uh, you know, CLI, whatever else, uh, it's going to interact directly with Postgres then or directly with Ant? Is that, is that what we're thinking? I think that's, I think that's what, yeah, I think, I think that's the thinking. Um, okay. I mean, I think so. So I think I have a slide here, which was like, yeah, it could be the, the SQL interface, or it could be like the JSON struct interface. We could have a library around here. These are the CLIs, there's the Quad Visualizer, and then like vendor solutions, like Kusari and Red Hat solutions can be like on top of this, right? Mm -hmm. Whether they want to talk to mm -hmm. SQL or JSON, or like in the end, like maybe we have to create an insights library. Um, mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah. So I think the question is like, that's, that's why I was kind of th thinking about this where like, oh, like if we went straight from this to like another, 
recording in dropping GraphQL directly, <clears throat> then uh, we we would like all the all the CLIs would break, right? <laughs> Um, I mean, and, even in version one, right, they're going to break because there is no client side queries anymore. So they would have, all have to get updated to directly so client. I, I think what I wanted to say is like, it's, it is because the, the SQL is V1, yeah. but the functionality is, is the the GraphQL is still not V one in a sense. Yeah. Or we, we could we could say the GraphQL is also V one, right? I think that's fine. Maybe yeah. that, but I think the question is like, do we we don't want people to be relying on the GraphQL necessarily? Uh yeah, so like yeah, like Mihai saying is like I think this this makes sense. Your, your progression otherwise yeah otherwise we break everything <laughs> yeah yeah i'm reading too hard behind it yeah if we drop it from the client side this is going to require some changes to the clis and whatever else right just and you just call in directly yeah my, my thought is to like still have it there but like not not recommended to people <laughs> Because we're gonna we're gonna see if it's gonna drop in the future. Okay. Um, hey, so for version one, you mean? So keep for it version. for version one. So keep uh, GraphQL client side. Well, yeah. So so for all of version one, GraphQL. Um, I'm talking about client side, not server side, right? Yeah, I see what I mean. Because um, the green is, the green is the server side yeah. for the ingestion. I get that, but then for the client side, right? That's where the CLI, that's all our CLI all, all break. Our you know other integrations all break. I would say the the client the library breaks. will be client library will be deprecated, but still usable. Okay. Yeah. So like we make sure no one, no one uses, uses it. Mm -hmm. So in terms of doc, yeah. we, sh we should not have. Yeah. Um. One one question there. Um. I mean, since the GraphQL server will still be there, um, there's not really any any cost to just like people can use the the CLIs without any without any changes yeah without the client side you mean yeah even yeah. if it, even if we're we're saying like you can even if we're more explicitly supporting uh querying the SQL database um on the client side um, all the CLIs will still work. Yeah, we we could technically put the the GraphQL client in the internal directory so no one can, so so people wouldn't be able to use it besides the Glock CLI. Okay. Yeah. Well, but that's, I mean, is there any downside to allowing people to use, say, the, the um. GQL as as a query language with the um the playground. The playground still let be there, right? Because that's on the server side. Yeah. Um. I I think that that there. I don't know if there's a reason to not keep supporting that. Even if we expand support or like direct access to the SQL. I mean, long term for like version two, GraphQL will go away completely. I think that's a version thing. two, but yeah. yeah. Or intermediately, yeah. I mean, you can still use GraphQL Playground if you wanted to. Well, 
Um, yeah, and Brendan, yeah, you. Think, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying. I think what Mihai just said kind of echoed what you were saying, right? It's like there isn't a cost for us to support it. It's just like we have to be very conscious about nudging people to be like, you shouldn't be using this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and then on another note, um, like I, as we nudge people towards using the SQL, um, I assume that like the backend SQL schema will change quite a bit at V2, um, given that we make a new, yeah, just completely different set of requirements. Um, like, do, do you expect to? provide an upgrade path there or migration or um, that I assume that could be possible. I think that could be possible. I, 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 I feel like Jeff may have opinions on this. <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's, it's going to be possible in the sense of like, if we, given that we are, we're telling people, oh yeah, you collect all this information, all the documents start in this place, like we can just reprocess it and then you'll get the new, the new one. Um, not sure whether we have to do kind of like a. No, I, I think we'll have to do a migration. You know, like, you know, we can create a SQL migration script or something. I think we will have to do something. I, I don't think that's going to, I don't think that's going to work. Like, oh yeah, we ingest everything. It's like, well, I don't have these documents anymore. <laughs> right. I lost that folder or I lost it. I don't know. So I think, yeah, I think if we have a database running at ver version one, you need to migrate to the new schema and keep the data. So maybe we should look into seeing, look into um, if there's I, any, any information that, that like we're losing now that, that won't support that migration in the future. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think a migration path is fine. I don't think it has a V feature 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 from Plato. So like the migration, we can say like, oh yeah, like you're going to migrate to the new version. Your old data is not going to support these new features. Um, or like it's going to be like a little bit more difficult for you to, 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 to use the data in certain cases. I think it's fair because I, I don't think, like, I feel like it's hard to predict the future to say like, oh, we're going to do all these things in V2 and then like, we need the information to collect it right now. Um, as much as I, we, I think we can think about it unless we want to wait for us to finalize the V2 before we launch a V1, it's going to be hard to get everything. Yeah, it's definitely difficult to, to 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 be sure if like we're we're doing every all the right things right now to support the migration in the future. Um, I think that's a good question, though. Like, I mean, that's that's gonna happen at what? Uh, like after a year version one and a half. Right, yeah. after version one. Yeah, I mean. As we're getting to version two, yes, I think we have to provide a migration and we got to make sure that anything that's being migrated or we're not losing data. And if we are losing data, stuff like, hey, hey, we don't care about this anyways, or it's not being used or whatever, like it was never being used or something, sure. Then I mean, I, I, but... I think that like, I think it's because like the way that the the certifiers are, are, are doing things right now is they're putting it in the block store thing right i think if we i don't think it would be unfair to say that it's a reinvest uh, everything yeah to be to be yeah to be like if you want to move to version two 
like the best practice would be you you have that block. That, that. I mean, it depends on how long it takes, right? Like if, if someone's using it and like, oh yeah, I have like terabytes of data, <laughs> terabytes of S-bombs in there, it's going to take like a week. And that's, but, uh, that's not good. but it's a one time. So I, I, I can't think of it from the perspective of like, like doing the SQL will probably be similar, right? Yeah. You're readjusting the SQL to <laughs> SQL schema. Um, yeah, I know. I mean, they're both. Because they're if they cared about the data, they would, they, the, the size of the graph database will be similar to the size of the blob star, probably. Yeah, or more, probably. Yeah, I mean, re-ingestion is not out of the question, right? But that is basically the disaster recovery plan anyways, right? It's like, okay, if, if everything fails, you just re-ingest the data. The certifiers will pick, you know, if you lose a certifier data, sure, that's not a big deal either because you can always just get the new vulnerability data, right, from yeah. the certifiers and license data. You lose some historical data about vulnerabilities and stuff, but that's, that's it. You're not losing SBOM data. Yeah, so I think Mihai is saying just uh, dump the database to make sure that if anything goes wrong and then and then do migration uh -huh. scripts later. Yeah, I think that, that's fair. That, that, that sounds good to me. I, I think we could also, if anything, come up with a draft like ontology for the for the for the V2. Um mm -hmm. And and do a sanity check that there's no, like that on ingestion we're not dropping anything now that that's like fundamental in the future. Yeah. I think one other thing that's very important is just to make sure like keep optional keep things optional in the new ontology if whenever possible. It's even though in the ontology it's required, but because we we may see missing data in the old. The old one, we should keep fields optional. Yeah. yeah. Mihai's plus one on optional. Okay. Um. Yeah, I, I have a question on on another topic. If we're if we're done with that. Um. Yeah, I, I think the the one thing just to wrap up this. Um. Mm -hmm. I think one thing we, we did talk about or we want we should talk about at some point is is kind of um work on this V2 thing. Um I think that that's something that I'm gonna try and see whether we can work on this. Um because I know like some folks in, in cloud are also interested in the ingestion bit. Um, so I'm going to see whether, because I, I know like this, this, this proposal is like significant amount of work. Um, so I think I'm going to try and see whether we can work on funding this part of it. Um, whether it means doing it ourselves or getting some help. Um, and I think whether that will be, I think we all have to agree whether like this is a worthy endeavor to go on. So we, I think once I get more information on that, we probably need to have like kind of like a maintainer vote. Yeah. 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 Cool. I, I right. think, I mean, yes, this is based on like, you know, our other meeting and community meeting. I think a lot of people are on board of going down this road. So, but yeah, we can definitely have a vote. I don't see any kind of, Pushback. Cool. Uh, Marco. 
Um, so, so what does it exactly mean here in at a more concrete level to expose the the SQL for V1? Um, are we like we won't be making any changes? Is is it only changes in um, in recommendations and documentation? I think this is a little bit of like, yeah, yeah, the recommendations and documentation. I think technically it should be, should be the same. And technically we can just do it now, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I think this, this was one thing. Uh, yeah. Is yeah. Is that um? I get. I guess it's still like if, if people build things on top of it, um, it'll change in the future, so it'll break everything. But so so in that sense, it's like the same as doing the current, like using the GQL. But um, well, I mean, you could have your own queries. Like your own, you know, you can create your own client client interface that doesn't break. As long as I mean, as long as you know, tables and schema doesn't change. Yeah, for, for um, V two, they will change. Right. Yeah. Then yes, then it'll break. Uh, I think one of the one of the examples is like whenever they everyone was like, oh, we want to be able to do query on this field as so just like a prefix, then we had to change the graph here <laughs> to kind of expose that, and so. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I think yeah, that's why it gets uh, tricky. It meets the. Yeah, it has all the usability yeah. benefits. Yeah. Okay. Plus, you can make more efficient queries. You know, you could do not equal, without <laughs> easily, more easily, whatever else you want to do. GraphQL, you can't. Well, you can do not equal, but you have to implement it everywhere. Mm hmm. All that kind of crap. Um. I had a tangential question that this kind of brought up, which is like, do, do we want to freeze the GraphQL interface then? Uh, but it's it's the ingestion mechanism for V1. So um, if we want to make any changes to that, the, it can't be frozen. Like everything still has to pass through there. In order to end up on in the in the database, yeah. Mihai thinks we should freeze. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're not adding any new. I mean, the OCI collector is the only new thing, but we haven't been anything new. So we can freeze. The right side stuff too like i don't see a reason that's going to change at least now right at least for version one maybe for version two sure but like that should be fine yeah i'm i'm thinking free thing is fine unless there's like a bug or something that it's like okay yeah like yeah we mess it up but i think by now, we think we'd have caught all the ingestion bugs for sure. Yeah, I, I, the the thing about the JSON to 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 GQL, I feel like it's technically like this file is optional. Like if we if we. We could just straight up go to version two. I think this is kind of more in the sense of like, oh, we, um, for some reason, you know, version two of graph is not ready. Uh, oh. Do we want to? <laughs> version two of graph, I think we probably want to move off end also. Oh, uh, yeah. And go okay. So, and direct, yeah. direct cipher. If Postgres supports it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, over here, I put ingest into JSON proto into SQL cipher. Yeah, we just drop end. And then we just, we just minus this. It should be coming out next year, right? <laughs> Hopefully. So, 
famous and I think that, that I think that's going to help that's going to help a lot you know like you know a lot of Alistair's concern, concerns all that kind of stuff I think you can hey we SQL directly now you can optimize as much as you want to right yeah yeah uh, yeah I'm hoping like we can make progress on on the the, the proto ontology by the end of this quarter and then maybe we can directly work with Alistair to kind of start start building the database and then he can feedback to us like when the ontology kind of doesn't allow uh, certain things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Marco, do you have something else? I think we we kind of sidetracked a little bit there. And uh, no, no, I'm okay. Cool. Um, anything else we're gonna chat about? And Parth, I, I pinged to Nathan um, to, mm -hmm. to talk about the PR, um, but I'm not sure if he saw, he might, I don't think he saw um, it. So I, I don't know if you um, yeah, I can, I can talk to him more often, but yeah. You want to jump on a call with him or did you want to? Um, yeah, I, I, I asked him if he, if he thought that sounded good. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to him. He's offline, looks like, right now. But I'll see when he's online. I'll talk to him. All right. Thank you. What a path while I have you here. Uh, <laughs> so I chatted offline with Tom about the in total spec on the vulnerability thing. Yeah. And I, I'm not sure. I I don't know when the, the next in total meeting is, um, but I'm... Technically, like on um, Friday. Oh, Friday. Okay. Um, maybe I should drop by. But technically, like yeah, this is Friday. V one isn't implementable. If like we either have to break the spec and say like this is the new V one or V V zero point one, uh, or we just have to say like this is V zero point two and V zero point one, and you should never use it. Was there some issues? I actually haven't looked at the. I know you commented yeah. on some stuff. The 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 spec is ambiguous. Uh, oh really? I created a, a, a PR. I created a PR and I created a, a issue also. Yeah, like. And this since I if you hear let me just share my screen. Um yeah, so this one is quite kind of stupid. Uh, it's like simple, but it's like yeah, the scanner it says scanner result star vulnerability, but mm -hmm. in this case it doesn't have this vulnerability struct in the example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh. um, and then also in here severity is an object over here severity is a list of objects mm. so it, yeah it's like the, the cardinality between the result and the severity is different yeah uh, and then invocation in the example still exists and yeah and the, the name was wrong also <laughs> so, it was uh, bound versus okay. bound um so did he say did tom say we should merge this hectares thing in first and then i was like like my i i wouldn't like my thought of it is like we should get it right and then merge it um but mm -hmm. it seems that marcella wants to merge it um so i'm making changes 
Yeah, unless you're making changes. So like, I, yeah. I mean, I, so it looks like Tom is Tom can approve. So because yeah. Marcella approved, and then I think Tom put some comments in. I, I think, think Tom if he approves it. It's up to him. Like, <laughs> if he Tom, wants to approve it. Tom's take is like there's no there's no right way to do this because it's like. Yeah, it, it, there's no, there's no. It's gonna be broken. I know. Yeah, and then it's gonna be to, broken. You have to put your way. PR on top of it to fix it. Yeah, it's gonna be broken right away. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, it's good to go in and fix it right away. Yeah, because Which is the fine, thing, I think. <laughs> it's funny because that, like, I don't think anyone's using it right, except for us at this point. Because. Well, I think, like, heck... some someone in Google created a <laughs> solution based on that. So oh, it's okay. like. That's why I uncovered yeah. all these errors because they they wrote the spec based on I don't know yeah. they kind of like cherry pick based on what was written and what was in the examples so it kind of uh, looked weird. That's the mismatch, okay. <laughs> yeah, I so see. like the the severity and everything they kind of followed the example. Yeah. Um, but like the spec says differently, and like hackers oh, proto is also according to the example. Um. I don't know what the invocation as well. That's no longer in the spec. Um, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, it might be worth worth just chatting through. Yeah, the maintain the maintainer meetings at ten a.m. on okay. Fridays, so it might be worth uh, dropping by and then we can discuss. Like, hey, we can just merge it. What do we want to do with it? Okay, uh, let me um, let me put that on my calendar. Cool. Is is Nathan in uh, SAS? Oh, yeah, do you know? Are you are you there? You didn't say anything to me, so sounds like it. Okay, so yeah, it's flying out. Cool. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Like, he would have said something because he was gonna be out. Maybe it's a family trip, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe he and his other son are going. I'm not sure if they're all going. I don't know. I'm sure they're going to be pushing the other one that their project. Oh yeah, that 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 thing, big bro thingy. Yeah, I yeah, it's called now. Something. All right. Cool. Um, anything else is not real. Definitely. No, I think we have already. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks. Bye. Bye.